Mr here. Speaker, and can I add my congratulations to those members who have made their meeting speeches this evening, particularly to those who have hung around and listened to the rest of the debate. Uh, yeah, I yeah, once yeah. drove uh, through a snowstorm to get from Darlington to Jedburgh. It, uh, I clearly remember driving up Carter's Bar, which takes you over the border between Scotland and England. When I reached the top, I was chuffed to bits. I had manoeuvred a rear-wheel drive automatic through difficult terrain and a snowstorm. Then the reality dawned on me. The second half of the journey was going to be the hard bit. A steep decline, twisting and turning with no road markings and every chance of running off the road. And that's what's lay ahead, and that's my Brexit allegory. <laughs> the Prime Minister and her cohorts, blinded by power, have marched us up to the top of the hill, only to discover, in this case, it's a cliff edge. Over time, plenty of people have negotiated difficult journeys, but I fear the Brexit journey that lies ahead will be a particularly dangerous one, because those that are leading it will not admit just how hard it's going to be. They should be seeking out every pitfall and identifying all the hazards, but instead we're being fed a diatribe of jingoistic clichés. It was a mess before the Prime Minister called a general election, and her selfish actions have now complicated matters beyond anyone's wildest nightmare. No one will form a coalition with this precarious government, the DUP choosing to provide their votes when it suits them and handling a billion pounds worth of tissues when it all goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. And this brave new world seems to be based on that we did it before, we can do it again. Empire mentality, flag waving and patriotism. As we turn our backs to the European Union and we seek to create new trade agreements, we will require diplomacy and negotiating skills things that so far have been conspicuously absent in the whole Brexit mess. That is one reason I have been delighted to hear that politicians across the EU have, in increasing numbers, been prepared to add their support for Scotland to remain in the EU and in the single market. While the UK was committed to the EU, these same voices remained silent. They respected the UK and its position. But by serving Article 50 to leave the EU, the UK has turned its back on the EU and the single market. As a result, the loyalty of previous partners has been lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where is Scotland's influence in these negotiations? Where well, Scotland is only 8.6% of the population of the UK, the Scottish fishing zone makes up over 60% of UK waters. Yep. That's the fourth largest yeah, sea nice. area in the one EU nice. core waters. Scotland is 32% of the land area. We provide 40% of the wind, wave and solar energy production, 47% of the open cast coal production, 62% of the timber production, 65% of natural gas production, 81% of the untapped coal reserves, 92% of the hydroelectric power, 96.5% of crude oil production and 100% of the Scotch whisky industry. And yet we have no voice. If these negotiations are to have any credibility, then the Scottish Government must have a place at the negotiations. Anything less is a flagrant disregard of the democratic standings of this United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah.